Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 21 to 25 of the Junior Math Challenge from 2018. If you're preparing for the Junior Math Challenge, also take my free online course, uh, Get Ready for the Junior Math Challenge. In that course, you can practice real questions from recent Junior Math Challenge papers. Every question has a video hint as well as a full video solution, and there are no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube. Uh, sign up in the link below, no payment details required or, not, or anything like that, totally free of charge, so have a look at that now. There is also an upgrade course called Go for Gold in Math Challenges, and in that course you can learn about all of the techniques you need for the Math Challenges and practice on loads of original practice problems that I've made up there as well. But you can have a go at the free course first, it's a big course and it's very substantial and it will really help you prepare uh, for the Junior Maths Challenge. So I really hope that I'll see you over there. Hopefully you know that the vowels are A, E, I, O and U and if we just count the ones that are already in the sentence here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, we see we've got 12 vowels already in this sentence. Now that doesn't mean that the answer is 12 here, because if I put uh, the 12 in this sentence, then actually I'd get two more, and so there'd be 14. Right, but we don't have to keep recounting the original sentence, right? So 12 has two vowels in it, 13 has one, two, three, 14 has one, two, three, four, 15 has three, and uh, 16 has three. So in each case, I'll have 12 plus this number in total once I've included this word. So here I'd have 14, 15, 16, 15, um, or 15. And that means that the answer is D15. If I put that word in here, I get three extra vowels that brings me up to 15. And then the sentence would be true. Another tough question here. When you've got these questions that are about geometric shapes, here about triangles, uh, the best thing to do is to try to draw them out. Right, so let me just put a couple of triangles on the page here. I don't know anything about the shape of them, so I'll just make any old triangle here, and we'll label them uh, P, Q, R, and S, T, U. So often once you've got a diagram, the question becomes a lot easier, and it gives us a way of writing down this information. So it says R, P, Q is two times U, S, T. So R, P, Q is this one here, and UST is this one here, and it's saying RPQ is double UST, so let me call UST X, and in that case RPQ here would be 2X, right? Similarly, it says PRQ is 2 times SUT, so PRQ is PRQ that's here, um, and SUT is here. Again, PRQ is double UST, so let's give it a different name, let's call that one Y, and then this one would be 2Y, right? And the last one, it says RQP is a fifth of UTS. So RQP here is a fifth of UTS. So I could call them Z and one fifth Z, but I think I'd rather not have fractions. So if this one is a fifth of this one, I could call this one Z and this one five Z. Now I know the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So looking at the first triangle, PQR, we would have two X, plus 2y plus z is equal to 180 degrees. And in the second triangle, we'd have x plus y plus 5z is equal to 180 degrees. Now, to make these match up, what I'm going to do is actually count all the angles in the second triangle twice. Effectively, I'm going to double everything in this second equation. So it must be also that 2 lots of x plus 2 lots of y plus 10 lots of z is equal to 360, right? So I'm saying if I had two copies of this second triangle, then... Um, I would, uh, the, 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 these would be the total of the angles and they'd now add up to 360 degrees, right? Because if I compare these two equations now, uh, you can see they've both got 2x and 2y in them. Now in this one I add z and in this one I add 10z. So the only difference here is that there's more z in the second equation, right? So the extra 9z here must account for the difference between the 180 and the 360. Uh, so that gives us that 9z is 180. If you've done simultaneous equations, you can think of this as uh, subtracting equation A from equation B here. Um, but we can also just do it a bit more informally like I've done it there. So if 9z is 180, that means that uh, z is 180 over 9, which is 20. And now which angle do we want? UTS, that's 5z, 
Uh, so 5z is uh, 5 times uh, 20, which is 100. And so the answer is B, 100 degrees. Right, so let's just focus on these ones here. So let me call that one X and that number Y. Um, it says everything after the fourth from the left, so everything from the one onwards, is the sum of the four to it to its left, right? So if I look at the eight first, that must be the sum uh, of these four, right? So eight here is X plus Y plus one plus zero. Okay, so the X plus Y here must just be seven, right? X and Y, whatever they are, have to add together to give seven. Now, if I think about what's in the final square, well, the final square is going to have these four numbers. So the answer to the question here is going to be X plus Y plus one plus eight, or X plus Y plus nine. So without knowing what X and Y are individually here, because I know their total is seven, I can just say this is seven plus nine, which is 16, and so the number in the final square here must be 16, and then the answer is A. So putting in algebra often helps, and I'm going to start here by just calling the side lengths of the rectangles X and Y, and all of the rectangles are identical, right? So that means this length is Y here, this one is X, this one is Y, this one is X, and the only difficult side on shape P is this one, um, but you can see here that uh, the length that we've got left here is just the y here minus this length here, which would be x. So actually this bit here is y minus x, right? Um, and I can do the same on the other shape. I can just label them. This one would be x, this would be y, this would be y, x, y, x, y, x. And again, for exactly the same reason as in the, as in the first one here, uh, we've got this minus this, Right, that's y minus x would give you this side, and the same for this side here would have this minus this, that would also be y minus x. Right, so now I can just look at each shape. So let's take p, we'll start at the top here and go around. So I'd have x plus y plus y minus x plus x plus y plus x plus y, that would be its perimeter. And we're told in the question that that's 58 centimeters. So here I've got one, one lot of x that cancels out there, and then two more x's, and then I've got one, two, three, four y's. So I get 2x plus 4y equals 58. And in the second one here, q, um, let's start at the top and go around again. So I've got x plus y plus y minus x plus y minus x plus x plus y plus x plus y plus x plus y, and that's all going to add together to give 85. So if I count these up again, I've got an x that cancels out, another one that cancels out, and then I've got two more x's, so that's 2x, and then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 y's, so 2x plus 6y gives 85. So I've got these simultaneous equations, 2x plus 4y equals 58, and I've got 2x plus 6y equals 85. Um, now if you've done simultaneous equations as a topic you might now know you've got to subtract the first one from the second one um, or we can also just think of it as looking at these equations because they in the math challenge they usually give you ones that are quite easy to match up nicely so here you see you've got 2x plus 4y is 58 and 2x plus 6y is like 2x plus 4y plus another 2y is 85 so this extra 2y must account for the difference between 85 and 58, right? So either way, whether you do it formally by subtracting one equation from the other, or just by thinking it through like that, you see that 2y has to be 85 minus 58, which is uh, here uh, 27. So y is 13 and a half, but you actually don't need to divide by two here and make things messy, because like I could just go back to this equation now and say, well, if 2y is 27, I mean, 4y is 54, so this gives me two. Uh, this gives me running up space here. Two x plus fifty four is fifty eight. So two x is equal to four, right? Because what we're asked for here is what's the perimeter of one of the rectangles, right? And uh, let's make a bit of uh, space here. So the um, the perimeter of one of the rectangles, right, would just be. Right, if it's 
uh, x, y, x, y, it would just be 2x plus 2y. Right, so I don't have to even work out the size individually. I know I've got to do 4 plus 54, so 4 plus 50, um, sorry, not plus 54, 4 plus uh, 27, because that was 2y is 27. So 4 plus 27 gives me 31 centimeters, and that would be the perimeter. Okay, you could also work out, of course, that you know y is 13.5 here and x is 2, and then work out 2x plus 2y from there, and you'll get the same. Either way, answer is b, 31 centimeters. In the solution that follows, I say something that is uh, slightly wrong actually, but turns out not to matter, and I want to I've, I've, I want to point this out because it's really interesting here. So. Um, in the solution I'm about to give, I say at one point that STR and STP, these triangles, um, are, are congruent, right? That they are uh, actually absolutely identical. But I don't really know that, right? In fact, S could be anywhere, right? So as long as I make TS uh, the same length as TR and TP, I mean, S could, you know, could be out here or something, right? Um, so really you should do this question algebraically by saying like oh you know let these two be a and uh, let these two be b and then do everything in terms of algebra now so i effectively in my solution just say well that why don't we take a, a equal to b and we don't know that that's true um interestingly for a maths challenge question it's actually a fine argument here because if this question is going to have an answer regardless of where you put s then it must also have the same answer here, the number of sides, for my nice choice of S here that makes these two angles A the same. So this is quite a subtle piece of uh, advice for these challenges, but sometimes if there is a totally free choice of something, like S can be anywhere here, um, then if it's true for all the possible places you could put S, it must also be true for the nice version. So the way I've worked it out here with the nice version will uh, be fine. Um, for those of you that want to see it, I'm going to put a second solution to this problem uh, afterwards where I do it totally in terms of the algebraic way as well, just to convince you. Right, the last question is always a tough one, and I've made a big copy of the diagram here to try and make this um, as a little bit easier. The bigger the diagram, the, e the, more, uh, the more easily I can write on it. Um, now, mostly in these geometry questions where we've got a picture here, the things, the words here really just represent this picture, right? So it says the diagram PQ and S, are, uh, PQ and Q are sides of a regular n-sided polygon. That's these two sides here. Um, we want to find out how many sides the regular polygon has. And the way we tend to do that is to try and work out what the exterior or the interior angle are and use the formula, right? So in particular, I tend to use the, the exterior angle is 360 over n. And so I can see I've got, like, I've got an exterior angle over here, but then I'd have to worry about what these angles are. So the one I'm probably going to want to go for is the uh, exterior angle um, that's in here. And I'd want to work that out then by, you know, I could know this interior angle, right? So I've got at least a target for this problem. And um, we know SPQ and uh, SRQ are 80 degrees. So that's the whole of this angle all the way from out here. This angle in the middle is 70 and all the lines are equal that have the, the lines through them, um, PT, ST and RT. So we've got some isosceles triangles. So if we put all of this together, um, then we'll be able to work it out. Now it's just finding a starting point here. So we know in this isosceles triangle, you know, like those two angles uh, are gonna be equal and um, that these two angles are gonna be equal. Uh, we've also got the 70 degrees in the middle and we can sort of see that we've got a perfectly symmetric picture here. So actually these two angles are also going to be equal and uh, that's where we can start. So uh, the angles of a circle add up to 360 degrees. So to get those, uh, I'm just going to undo all my x, y's and z so I can write over them. So 360 minus 70, that gives us 290. That's this circle in the middle. So between those two angles, they're going to take up this 290. Uh, 290 divided by 2 is 145. So I've got that this is 145 and this is 145. Um, so now in this triangle here, these two angles uh, x have to add up to 180 minus 45 because angles in a triangle add up to 180. So that's 25, uh, sorry, 35. Um, so 35 over 2 is 17 and a half and 
that means these angles are going to be 17 and a half. Uh, so actually this part of the angle here is 80 minus 17.5, uh, just the bit in here. Um, so that's going to give us 62.5. Right. Um, and by the symmetry here, exactly the same down here, of course. This is 17.5, this is 17.5, and this is 62.5. So uh, now this is a, a quadrilateral, okay? Um, so that's going to add up, all the angles there are going to add up to 360. So we've got 62.5 plus 62.5 plus 70 plus, let's call it A, the one I'm looking for here, um, that's going to be 360. So uh, I've got 135 plus 70, that's 205 plus A is 360. So A is 360 minus 205, that's 155. And then the exterior and the interior angles lie on a straight line. So B here, the exterior angle that we're looking for is 180 minus 155 which is 15 and then finally we can go back to this exterior angle formula and say that the number of sides okay we could also write you know you can rearrange this right and write that the number of sides is the is 360 degrees divided by the exterior angle so n is 360 over 15 factor of 3 top and bottom gives me 120 over 5 and then dividing by 5 here gives me 24 and so the answer must be that uh, the number of sides here is D24. Really well done if you got that right. If you weren't convinced by my choice of uh, S making the two triangles equal, we could proceed without knowing they're equal, right? So I could call these two X uh, and these two Y, uh, but it would make all of the algebra it's just going to make this question a bit harder, but that's fine. Um, that means that this angle in the middle here is 180 minus 2x, because angles in a triangle add up to uh, 180. And in here, it's going to be uh, 180 minus 2y. And uh, then because the circle in the middle adds up to 360, so I know 180 minus 2x plus 180 minus 2y uh, plus 70 has to be 360. Uh, so the uh, subtracting 360 from both sides just gives me that 2x plus 2y has to be equal to 70 here. Um, so that means that x plus y has to be 35, dividing that by 2. Uh, and then the angles in the quadrilateral right, would be, uh, so I've got to this one's 80 minus x and this one's 80 minus y. So I've got that 70 plus 80 minus x plus 80 minus y uh, plus, let's call this one A again, uh, plus A is equal to 360. Now I add all this together, I get 150 plus 70 is 220. And then I'm going to take off an X and a Y, so that's like minus X plus Y plus A is 360. So without knowing what the X and the Y are individually, I know the total is 35. So that's 220 minus 35 plus A is 360. Um, so that gives me A is 360 minus 220 is 100 and, uh, is 140. Oh, sorry, I've added these together wrong. 80 plus 80 plus 70 is 230. So 230 minus 35 is 100. Sorry, okay, uh, 360 minus 230 is 130. And then plus uh, 35 gives us 165, just as before. So then the exterior angle is 180 minus 165, which is 15. And again, the number of sides then is 360 over 15, uh, which is 24. But think carefully about that thing I said in the introduction, because it can make these sorts of questions a lot easier. And it was a perfectly valid method of solving the problem uh, in this case. Um, so there we go. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges. You can find links uh, in the descriptions below, uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some upgraded courses as well with some extra content. If you really want to master the challenges, you can sign up for those as well, but there's loads over there uh, for free. So I really hope that I will see you over there soon.